Hey guys, today we'll be looking at how to quickly make this abstract background in Blender. All right, so with a new Blend file open, the first thing you want to do is add a plane. And what we're going to do is add a lot of subdivisions. So I'll just add a subsurf modifier and set it to like eight. We're going to need a lot because it does use displacement. And I'm going to set it to simple so that it remains as a square and doesn't turn into this circle. So now that we have the object set up, the rest is all in shading. So we're going to open a new shader editor and create a new material. Once we did that, we can add a texture coordinate node. And what we're going to do is use the generated output as this will give us this really nice gradient. Um, if you, for example, use object, you're going to have a lot of black because of the negatives, but um, generated or UV, um, I like the generated look a bit more with like the blues and the lighter colors, but you can experiment with the colors, even maybe like shift the hue with a node. Um, but yeah, we'll keep it nice and simple. So once you have that node, um, you can add a vector math node. We're going to place it right after the texture coordinate node and set it to snap. What this does is if you look at the output, um, right now it says 0, 0, 0. But if we, for example, set it to 0.1, what it's going to do is it's going to round to the nearest point one. So instead of having a smooth gradient, we're going to have these blocks. If we put that into our principled BSDF, we're going to get nice shading. Um, of course, we don't have any lighting yet, so I'll just use the pre-built HDR by disabling scene world. Nearly the last step is just to add a displacement node. So I'm going to add that, connect it, the displacement to the displacement, and this vector if you try to use that as the height, that's not really going to work because this is a vector and this is a scalar. So what we need to do is duplicate this vector math node and set it to length. And once we connect this to that, what it's going to do is transform these coordinates into however far away from this corner they are. So as you can see, the coordinates start in this corner. But if you use the length, um, it all turns into black and white and the values get larger the further in this direction they are and then the further they are in this so it's basically a gradient that goes this way you might notice that it didn't actually do anything although you might get some different lighting um if you look at it from an angle to get it to work properly you just go to the material settings go down to the settings and then change this displacement type on the surface from bump only to displacement only and that's already going to work so here in the edges we have this really really thin thing piece that goes up and that's just because our, of our snap node. Um, so what we can do is actually set it instead of 0 0.1, for example, you can go 0 0.1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, like a really, really small value. And that's going to get rid of that for us. And you can even do that same thing for here by, for example, just adding something really small. So we can uh, set this to add and then just add a really small value. And that's going to fix this as well. So once we have that done, uh, our scene is nearly done. Um, once you add this, you might need to add a bit more to the snap again, uh, just so everything lines up. Now we have a lot of the scene done already. As you can see, I had the snap connected to the displacement and that wasn't really working um, correctly as the length is what you're supposed to use. So just connect that. And now you get this much nicer curve, um, which isn't just linear. So if I connect the snap again, you'll see that it's like literally just a gradient. But with the length, um, you actually get a really nice curve that's three dimensional. So once we have that finished, we can add a camera. So let me just do that and position it somewhere here. I'll, um, I set mine to square by default, but if it's not, you can go to this um, output properties tab and just set both of them to whatever you like. Like for example, 1080 by 1080 or 1440 by 1440. After that, you can um, position your camera uh, in this corner. And I actually found that having these uh, as the same, basically, so maybe something like minus three, minus three, and then three works nicely. And what you can actually do is to have this point towards our object, we can use a uh, constraint. So the object constraint track to, and then we can just select our object and it's going to center that automatically. If it's not vertically aligned, uh, instead of like changing the camera, I would just use this um, displacement. So maybe something like 0.85 and then it's gonna be centered in there. Another thing I like to do is set it to orthographic instead of perspective. That's just gonna make it a bit cleaner. So I'll go here, change it to orthographic and then adjust this orthographic scale until it fits. I think that's nice. I think the last thing you might wanna do is just edit the lighting. So I'll just go to the world shader 
what we can then do is use a mix RGB node, plug that into the color, and then use an environment texture node into the first input of our um, mix node and select an HDR. I really recommend some from hdrihaven.com as they're very high quality and free. Once you have that loaded up, don't forget to re-enable your um, scene world so it actually uses the correct lighting. If you wanna rotate the HDR, just um, with Node Wrangler installed, just press Control T or just add these two nodes manually. And you can use the Z rotation to adjust it to whatever you like. So once you have that done, you can go to this mix again and set the second color to black. And once we add a light path node and use the is camera ray, what that's going to do is um, mix the HDR and this black so that in the final render, the background looks black, but to the objects, we still get the lighting. And I like it black because that's just going to make it cleaner uh, because if we just have the HDR in the background, that's going to look weird, especially in orthographic view as it's just going to be a single color. But when we have a black background or you could even do it transparent to do that, you just go here to film and check transparent. Then you don't even need these two nodes. But I like it as a black background because if you, for example, want to use it in Windows, it might mess up if you just have transparency. I think it's really cool. You could of course tweak um, the colors you want to use for it as well as this principled bsdf like maybe you want it metallic and then increase the roughness just to get a different look but this is a really quick and easy way to create a background and i hope you enjoyed see ya